Instead of telling you a story today, I'm going to read you a story. Um, dear friends in Moldova, Matthew and Ruth Hillier. He's from Sydney, Australia. She's from the UK. The gospel united their hearts in this uh, very needy country. And they've been there about 10 years serving the Lord in the southern part of the country, and they live in the city of Zernesti. And he wrote me this note, and I thought you'd enjoy it. He says, I know that you enjoy stories of God working in people's lives and circumstances. As you know, there have been a lot of refugees coming to Moldova from Ukraine. They say around 500,000 so far. We've had the opportunity to accommodate some of them at our base, at our campsite. A week or so after the beginning of the war in February, a mother with two daughters, twins, 18 years of age, and a son arrived from the Odessa region. They were obviously, like many, traumatized by the war and in shock at so suddenly having to leave their home. Over the months that followed, we had the opportunity to talk with them from time to time, usually over a meal or in the dining room. We invited them to meetings, but initially they didn't show any interest. Then in May, the two girls started attending a weekly girls club that the assembly has. Then they asked for a Russian Bible and started coming to some of the meetings of the assembly. On the 21st of June, we started our summer children's camp season. The second of the five children's camps of the season, we decided to make for Ukrainian refugee children. This, of course, meant it had to be conducted in the Russian language. Most of the refugees in our area speak Russian and not Ukrainian, as they come from the south. To help with camp, we invited brother Sergei, to come from Russia with a small team. The Ukrainians staying with us were a little nervous about the Russian team coming. It was lovely to see, however, that within a short time of arrival, Sergei and his wife Irina had gone over and introduced themselves and were all talking happily together. Each evening, Sergei held a Bible study for the Russian team. And we were so happy to see the two girls and their mom not only joining in the study, but also taking much interest. Anyway, to cut a long story short, about four days after the Russian team arrived, the two sisters came running over one morning and said they wanted to talk urgently. They said that the previous night in their room, they both accepted the Lord Jesus as their Savior. They went on to say that they were thankful for the circumstances of the war bringing them to this place so that they could find salvation. A few days later, they came again and said they had been reading about baptism in the Bible and they wanted to be baptized in obedience to the Lord's command. They said they'd like to be baptized before their Russian brothers and sisters went back to Russia so this happened on the 29th of June. The visible peace and joy that these girls had was evident for all and such a beautiful testimony to God's grace. They have now gone on to Germany, and we pray they'll find a good place to fellowship there. Their mother also showed much interest, but at time of leaving had not yet made any decision. We continue to pray for her. He writes, their story reminds me of the words of Jeremiah 29, 11, which read, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now we know these words primarily have to do with the nation of Israel, but who would doubt that these words could be applied to many a poor lost soul who has turned to the Lord with all their heart? But here's the great irony. The Russians invade Ukraine. The Ukrainians flee to Moldova. The Moldovan brethren invite some Russians to come and share the gospel with the Ukrainians. 
these Russian-speaking Ukrainians put their trust in the Lord and want to be baptized while these Russian brothers and sisters are still there. The scripture says that God makes the wrath of man to praise him. Now, when I think of my own life, my father-in-law was born in Niederkordica on the Dnieper River in the Ukraine to a Mennonite family. They fled the Ukraine during the Bolshevik Revolution and ended up in Western Canada. And then because of the Great Depression, they moved to Southern Ontario. My father came to Canada because of World War II. He was with the Royal Air Force and was shipped there, and that's how he met my mother. So that I ended up a Canadian instead of a Scotsman, and my wife ended up a Canadian instead of a Mennonite in the Ukraine. And that's how we ended up here, because of these wars. And, you know, we often see what the news tells us, but what we don't realize is there's another whole war going on, and God is gaining the victory. As Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Pray for the Christians in these countries that surround the Ukraine. I know it's happening in Poland and in other countries where these people are flooding in, desperate for help. And it's the Christians who are stepping in and ministering Christ to their hearts through practical means and through the gospel. And so we pray that the victory that Christ wins will be far greater than anything recorded in the news. And so we must always have the eyes of faith to see beyond the obvious, to see beyond the material, to the real work that God is doing. And in spite of the fury of wicked men, God still accomplishes his ends. Praise God for that. And pray for these two young Christians and for their mother and their brother and for multitudes of others. Think of that. 500,000 needy people coming to Moldova and the Christians waiting uh, with open arms to receive them, to care for them, and to minister the gospel. God is doing a great work around the world. Don't just believe the news you hear. God has his own news broadcasters, and we're privileged to tell this story. And so pray for these dear people laboring for the Lord there, the Hilliers in Zernesti, and many others like them, that God will use them mightily in these days to accomplish his purposes. You know the plans God has toward us, thoughts of good and not of evil. His thoughts toward the human race are more than we can number, and all he is seeking is the blessing of every poor sinner who will turn to him in faith and receive Christ as Savior. <music> 